Hello and welcome to Politically Incorrect Knitters. My name is Anne Pinkova. This is Lovely Deplorable Knitter. And do we have a show for you? Oh, do we Sorry. ever? Do we? <laughs> Sorry, do we? I say I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we have a show. Never mind. Scratch that. Done. <laughs> it is, there is going to be a show. Whether or not it's for you is... <laughs> Great. So before we get into all the stuff, I'm still working on the hat I was working on last episode. It got put down for a little bit, but hey, things happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I was telling Anne, super duper exciting stuff. Um, I know that probably lots of you are aware that Maria had her mystery grab bag sale a few weeks ago. And I was lucky enough to get one. And I put in a little note saying, oh, please don't send me fingering weight because if anybody has been watching for any length of time, they know in my heart of hearts, I despise fingering weight. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I don't know who came up with it. The only thing worse than that is lace weight. Like, it's just not my thing. Um, so Maria, being fabulous as always, sent me two skeins of DK weight yarn. And they're just beautiful and gorgeous and lovely. And this one that's like pink and tan and off-white and things is called Raindrops on Roses, Whiskers on Kittens. So it's fabulous. And then this one, it makes my heart sing <laughs> because it's gorgeous. I mean, it's this lovely dusty purple. When you open it up, there's like some deeper grays in there and stuff like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, nobody does a tonal like Maria. I know. It's gorgeous. But the best part about this one, it's called Virtue Signal. <laughs> and so my brain has just been going away trying to figure out exactly what it's going to be because she can't send me a skein called Virtue Signal and, and have me not make a design out of it. Right. Like the other one, I'm not certain what it'll be. I'm not certain if they'll go together, but definitely going to turn it into something just so that I can say that it's Virtue Signal. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> she knows exactly how to speak my language and she sent me those fabulous fabulous games and so that was thrilling um <laughs> awesome. what about you Anne? what's new um not too much um i'm i'm knitting a very plain green hat for um for a lady i know so that's not super exciting. Um, I am getting uh, my Hong Kong scarf pattern together. Um, it's really beanie pattern together. Hopefully I'll be able to get it in testing soon. I hope before this episode comes out, but maybe not. We'll see how it goes. I am, you know, so painfully slow with patterns. <laughs> I, I just want to knit things and then forget about them and not turn around and be like, oh, actually other people are interested in making this too. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh Not yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled that people like to make my stuff, but sometimes my brain is going so fast when it comes to patterns that it's really difficult for me to like, like by the time I've completed knitting something, I've moved on. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for me to come back and like write the pattern and, and, and get all the details together because now my brain has gone on to the next thing and it's right. it's just totally like yeah pattern writing and i i know we say it a lot it's like a huge chore for me it's like so <laughs> terrible right well i have to be terrible but yeah i and i mean it's not as if i i don't want to produce this pattern for people or anything like that um i even find it to kind of be that way in like social media posts that it's like, oh, I finished something. Now wait, I have to take a picture. I have to think of something to say with it. I have to <laughs> do all. Like, no, 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 it, it's done now. I want to forget it and I want to move on to whatever the next project is. But yeah, no. I don't quite have that issue with social media. Um, but I think that I'm on mine quite a bit more than you are. So that's probably part of why I don't have that issue. Um, 
Yeah, Anna and I wanted to talk a little bit about our lovely new vice presidential candidate that got selected a couple weeks nominee. ago. Announced a few weeks ago, right? Right. Candidate nominee. Is she, I mean, they've had the convention, so isn't she a candidate now? Um, The convention. Yeah. Yeah. So that once they're official. they've been nominated, so they're for real. The people now. Right. So. Right. And I guess not our, but the because none of us are members of the Democratic Party. So. None of us has in you and me. I don't know about the people who watch. Oh, they might. That's be. true. That's true. Just. <laughs> nobody here, but you know. <laughs> nobody here, guess. but you, me, and the dog. You mean the dog. <laughs> and, and she's not registered as a Democrat either, so we're pretty all set. Right. She is. <laughs> yeah. A little Trump 2020 collar. <laughs> she's registered as a Democrat now. I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> well, speaking of being registered as a Democrat when you're not supposed to be registered at all, mm -hmm. I was going to tell you. Um, so I posted a meme. I know you're telling a story about Kamala Harris, but I'm totally going to hijack you. No, for go for it. So on my Instagram. Kamala's not that interesting. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. So on my Instagram, I posted a meme and people who are my age, I don't know if it, M. Night Shyamalan was big when I was like in high schoolish, right? Or getting right out of high school. So The Sixth Sense, have you seen it? I have not seen it. I've seen it exactly. referenced many times, but I have not seen it. Yeah. Right. So I posted a meme that is based on that. It's the boy, Haley Joe Osment, um, huddled under a blanket. And he says, I see dead people. And Bruce Willis looks at him and says, what do you see the dead people doing? I see them voting. <laughs> And so I posted it because, one, it's funny, uh -huh. and two, there's also a slight bit of truth to it. Right. Right. <laughs> and it <laughs> is talking to... It's a verifiable problem, especially with yeah, mail-in voting. And talking about your dog being registered as Democrat, it made me think of this because <laughs> somebody commented on it that her grandmother, who has passed 20 years ago and had lived with them during one election cycle... Mm -hmm. got an application for mail-in voting. Wow. So, uh, but her and her husband, who are alive and lived at that house and voted at that house, did not get one. Really? <laughs> yes, and then I got, like, totally this one, another person commented, and she was, like, really mad at me. Like, really mad. Because she was like, you know, I worked overseas and I needed my absentee ballot and blah, blah. Right. Nobody ever said you couldn't have an absentee ballot. Right. We're saying that the whole blanket sending out as many voting things as you can to all of the addresses and all the right. people who have ever lived there is a bad thing. Right. Because mail-in or absentee ba ballots, you have a, there's several steps you have to take to verify it. It's not right. just. It's anyone. not just willy nilly. Whoever gets it, gets it. Right. And, um, well, and, and with this bizarre you know, made up scandal about how Trump is destroying the post office and he's destroying the UPS, first of all, or USPS, sorry. Yeah. Um, but first of all, that they've been losing money for years and they've been a butt of jokes for years for not getting things done on time. Um, but Trump is walking around and he's putting padlock padlocks on mailboxes and he's hauling mailboxes away as if anyone can't send a letter through their own mailbox <laughs> you just you just put the little flag up that's why you have it um but also for for just the blue mailboxes that the reason that they close them is because it is manpower every single day for someone to check that mailbox some of them aren't cost effective and they take them away. And some of them they take away because it's an old mailbox and they need to put it in a new one. This is constant maintenance. One picture that I saw shared around is actually from like 2016 that the reason that it's locked is because there was like some fraud going on locally. Um, 
just stuff like that where people are reposting pictures and they say it's in this district and it's not and just bizarre bizarre rumor mongering <laughs> like there's it's a lot okay. of bizarre there will be a post office and AOC the other day wants a liberal pen pal thing to save the post office it's just yeah, that you not only go out there and buy stamps, literally, I have literally seen more liberal people post memes that they never thought the day would come where you would have to buy stamps to save the post office to preserve democracy because Trump is so evil, he's trying to stop people from voting. This like earnestly, earnestly reposting memes about this. <laughs> Like that's, oh. that's just not true. <laughs> like it's not <laughs> it's really strange to me. And yeah. the, you know, this person who was talking about, you know, absentee ballots, nobody anywhere has ever said that there should not be absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There should be, there are reasons for them. There are ways to get them. 110% believe there should be absentee ballots. This whole and so I responded to this person and I said, well, that's not exactly what I meant by it. And then they kept on and you should stick to knitting. And so I said, well, maybe you should too. And maybe you should get a sense of humor. And they were like, oh, that's such a Trumpism thing to say. And it's your <laughs> last resort. And I, I stopped talking to her. Right. It, it was, um, it was. How, sense of okay, humor I, is a Republican dog whistle. <laughs> <laughs> I, seriously though. It's the thing, yeah, I do think that there are some issues with mail-in voting, mm -hmm. but it was a joke. Right. It's based off of a movie where a kid sees dead people, and then he's saying he sees them voting. It's a joke. It's funny. It's not. But and so when I told her to get a sense of humor, it's because I posted it as a joke. Yeah, I think there's some truth to it. That's sometimes yeah, what and makes some jokes funny. When there's so much truth in it, that someone comments and say, yeah, exactly. That's that's what occurred yeah. to me like yeah, my grandma's voting <laughs> right <laughs> it's the only year she's ever voted democrat it's so discouraging <laughs> <laughs> oh she was live she'd never let this happen <laughs> exactly no and that's the my response of get a sense of humor is because it's funny right it's not meant to offend it's not meant to upset it's meant to be a joke and heaven forbid, we have a joke. And then there's other people who are like, because it was under a knitting hashtag, because I always use the same ones. And someone's like, I'm going to stop following you. And I'm like, but you don't actually follow me anyway. I'm going to stop following this hashtag. How does that hurt me? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, bummer for the next guy, but I mean, <laughs> come on. I don't know. I... I get some weird recommendations through hashtag and I'm not blaming the particular person. <laughs> like, I don't well, know. I mean, yeah, I use that hashtag and maybe that's not what you want to see, but um, anybody anywhere can use that hashtag. So right. whatever. <laughs> if that's yeah. what you have to be mad at, then <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Hashtag police. Woohoo. Except not the police. Hashtag oh, community yeah, no. organizers. <laughs> Definitely not harmful to anyone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, the police are bad. In my town, in my city, they have um, voted to defund the police. Oh. And then yesterday they voted to spend $16 million on a new police station, which I don't get. If you're defunding them, then why are you building them a new thing? I mean, it's going to be a community outreach thing, too. Probably. Oh, but yeah. I don't know. If you're defunding the police, then why are you spending so much taxpayer money on a new police station? Mm. Things not that make about, you go, hmm. It's not about defunding the police. It's about making sure the police are your police. So. Wow. Wow. That's not comforting at all. <laughs> You're like, stop that Anna. Like, I'm sorry. <sighs> Give me the willies. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. But anyway, yes. So 
I see dead people voting for Kamala. Creepy Joe. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, with Sorry. dead people voting, with okay, so here's like looking at all the things that Kamala Harris has done, like she she dropped out of the primary before voting happened. She was that least popular um besides being like the demon prosecutor in her district (laughs) like the as prosecutor when people came up for non-violent drug charges she went over and beyond what is anyone would consider is reasonable throwing people in jail right and left on the other hand okay so she was district attorney for 13 years and she did not once prosecute a single priest in child sex abuse cases, which apparently was a huge thing in San Francisco. Not one, not a single one. And she also got some really lovely money from Catholic charities. She's not a Catholic herself, didn't seem to matter. Um, And then let's see, this is all in uh, Peter Schweitzer's book, just to give references for what I'm saying. So I'm not pulling it off from whatever. I did write it down. Um, and he, Peter Schweitzer is the president of the government accountability institution. Um, his book is profiles in corruption, um, abuse of power by America's progressive elite. Um, so it's, so anyways, so there was, there's a huge, there was, you know, priest child abuse scandal. Um, it was different cases were prosecuted in like 50 cities. San Francisco was not one of them at all. And then as soon as last, or as late as last year, um, somebody asked um, for the paperwork, for the evidence from the case um, that was, they tried to have brought through in San Francisco. And it just so happened that the case files had been lost. They can't find them. Oh no, isn't that terrible? Yeah, but also, what the heck? <laughs> like, what? Well, I'm just being sarcastic because, oh, oh I, I'm surprised that they're lost. I know, but what a bizarre, and they, these people, um, the people who would have been prosecuted, um, have donated largely to uh, Miss Harris's campaign. So there's there's a lot of bizarre corruption with her. There's besides things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, um, 2010, she had an appearance where she talked about um, truancy for you know kids skipping out on school. That she would not only jail the kids but jail the parents, and she giggled about it. Like, she was laughing about, well, then kids are going to school now, aren't they? Because I'm throwing people in jail. What kind of a woman is this? Like, what? Yeah, I don't know. It's like you give her power and she's like, woohoo, I'm going to use it to inflict as much pain as possible. Like, what a... Well, and she also was very strict on, like, marijuana crimes and stuff. Like, she... Right. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason to what she was doing is a lot of what was going on. <laughs> right. just... Yeah, it's weird. Though, so, um, yeah, and things like that people have heard about. Like, obviously, her affair with Willie Brown, who he said last year definitely helped her political career. Um, you know, that's in, uh, I believe, Red State. There was nothing cool about that. But... Yeah, it's, she's, of all the people to choose, both, both Biden and, and Kamala Harris are such bad candidates that if they didn't put out Hillary Clinton last time, who was dreadful? Like, for, you know, she's the smartest woman and now's her time and nobody wanted her. Um, that there's that I'd be wondering, like, are they going to pull some sort of third party something? Are they going to, you know, try to switch it up last minute? It is so bad. I would think that, except, wait, you you did think that people wanted to vote for Hillary Clinton. So maybe. Yeah, it's, 
I don't know. I feel like the Democrats have been trotting. I mean, when did Biden run for president the first time in like 88? Is an article that says Biden's first run for president was a calamity. <laughs> and it's from the New York Times. So wow. I guess it didn't go well. <laughs> I know. Um, I was around in 88, but I was not following politics at the time. So I don't remember that one. But yeah, so we've got this party that is, I guess Kamala hasn't been around too terribly long. Like she's, I don't know, the, the party is just so old and used up and they just keep trotting out the same thing. I mean, like the whole, we had, like the front runner, Bernie Sanders, who's been in office forever. We've got Biden, who's been in office since the 70s. We've got, like, the party is old and sad. And I can't believe that this is what people really want. No, like, I, they weren't good choices the first time around. Biden wasn't a good choice the second time around. Well, now he is here, third time's a charm. I mean, that's what yeah. they did with Hillary. Yeah, it is It is very surprising. Um, and also, I mean, obviously, we're not Democrats. Maybe I'm not seeing a lot of overt support from the Democrats, I know, too. Many people are just anti-Trump no matter what. Um, which just having someone against someone else, but not for anything, that's not a very good place to be in. No, um, it's not, not really a great strategy for right. winning something or, well, right. you're not the other guy. Um, well, you're not, not a ringing guy. endorsement either. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. know. Though, on the other hand, um, as DK and I were talking about before the show, we do have a lot of really great fresh faces in the Republican Party, people who are getting um, at least nominations and endorsements from, from Trump and his family. Um, there's uh, Kimberly Clay, how is that Clay pronounced? Klasik. Klasik, I'm sorry. Klasik. I just, when I saw her ad, uh -huh. I about died. Like, I was like, is this real? At first, like, I almost thought that it was, like, I don't know. It was just so amazingly refreshing to see somebody saying, I'm a black person. I think that all of this Black Lives Matter stuff is crap. Let me show you what real life looks like here. Like, mm -hmm. that's just amazing. And it's yeah, what the, people need to hear. Yeah, the real pain in Democrat-run cities, that to go out and show it, to talk to people on the street, people who don't want the police to fund it, one man in her ad lost three sons. I can't yeah. imagine. And, and yeah, going out and talking to people, that was a really, really excellent ad. Yes. And she is really uh, up and comer. She's really, people are taking notice of her. She's not as young as some of them. I mean, she's my age, so she's closing in on 40, but still it's nice to see that they're going away from these establishment people who have made this into a career. You know, right. um, there's also Madison Cawthorn who's running in North Carolina. He just mm -hmm. turned 25, yeah. like a couple weeks ago. And so he just really became eligible to even run. Which I believe Mr. Joe Biden was in the same position when he first was elected to office. <laughs> so the contrast is, is something. <laughs> okay, but um, another one, uh, Anna Paulina Luna, um, she, for the mailer that she sent out, it was a picture of her and Don Jr. And she has pro-Trump, pro-gun, um, here was another pro on there, that it was very, you know, bold and brash. And um, Don Jr. said, well, like, it was... Uh, like it looked as if he endorsed her, but it didn't directly say on the mailer that he did. So he put out a statement saying, okay, I didn't actually endorse this woman, but she, she looks, you know, her platform looks great to me. And then after she got the nomination, um, President Trump put out a tweet saying, yeah, go her, she's awesome. <laughs> she has, she did a couple of promotional pictures where she was an Air Force, she's an Air Force veteran and she was in full camo fatigues in a gold throne with the American flag draped over it and she's draped across it and there's guns everywhere. 
And it is a hilarious picture, principle-wise, not just, you know, talking about looks and ads and whatever. Principle-wise, she is very good, too. And um, a lot of these up-and-coming, um, you know, freshman Senate and House seats that people are going for, um, that they are, there's a lot of very strong Republicans. There's a lot of young Republicans from all, all different backgrounds, too. So it's really excellent to see. Um, I was mentioning a little, we were talking a little bit before the show, like I said. Um, I'm really, I'm really hoping that, you know, when, when Newt Gingrich, Gingrich came in, when he had, you know, all of the, the freshman Republicans and it was so exciting and they were going to get stuff done. And to a certain extent they did, but everyone got kind of squishy at the end, you know? Yeah, there's so a... there, there is a tendency towards that, which I hope won't happen, especially, you know, Trump is president. You hope that it's a strong conservative base and it will keep going, but it, you, you know, to, to look at what happened in the past and to make sure that we voted you in for principle, um, like Trump was voted in, drain the swamp, to make sure that the people who are coming in because people want the swamp drained do not become the swamp themselves is, exactly. is a big issue. Though there is a lot of, I think a lot of hope and positivity in the, in the party right now, which is excellent. Yes. Um, so when Joe Biden started, when he first got into office, mm -hmm. He was 29. Oh. And so, I mean, personally, I have always thought that there should be term limit, limits for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how these people make this into a career and become millionaires. I mean, yeah, their salaries are decent, but they're not million dollar salaries. Like what is going on? Yeah. Where's the accountability? Where is the, these, I'm hoping the fresh people, well, one, I hope that they get elected for some right. because they look amazing. Like if I didn't live in such a blue state, I would be like, if anybody, I just wish somebody would come into my state like that. Somebody that you could really get behind. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't, I want to know how these people make all this money and, and it seems it seems like they are all just in there for the money and the benefits and the cushy Nancy Pelosi. Let me show you every kind of $12 ice cream I have. And, yeah. and they're not in there for their people. They're not in there to make things better. They're in there to make their lives better. They're in there to make Hunter Biden's life better. They're in there to make, you know, right. it's, it's not about the people at all. Right. Anymore. They're not, they're not contact or connected to their constituents anymore. Um, you know, with, with Nancy Pelosi specifically, where it's such a homelessness problem in our district, such a drug problem in our district, that there's so much that federally they put an environmental hazard. <laughs> you know, the- They did? Yeah, in San Francisco. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that was, that was a couple months back, but. <laughs> Somebody on a government level got involved. <laughs> EPA, wow. environmental protection. That yeah, it was littering and yeah, it really? was bad. Yeah. And I just you Get my know, and then everybody's right. everybody's you know decrying Trump and his money and his, but at least he made his money. He's a businessman. We know how he made his money. Right. What are y'all, you people, doing that have all this money that have been public servants for your whole lives? What is going on? Uh, I don't know. But seriously, if somebody watching truly feels passionate about Biden, I'd really like to know why. Mm -hmm. Just and throwing that out there. If there's right. something that he has done that sets you aflame, I'd really like to know because as of now, I don't understand. Right. And, and so, and not just, um, you know, that he's not Trump, like specifically about Biden, like even if in the primaries you were, you were going to vote, you were voting for Biden or going to vote for Biden, for Biden or 
Yeah. That's- what what is it that made you feel that way? Because I would really like to understand. Like we can trash talk him all we want, but I would really right. like to know why. Why mm. people thought he was a great candidate and that he was worthy. I also would really like to know why the person that like blamed him the worst in the in the beginning debates is now his running mate. She, yeah. she called him a racist and a sexist and she when the uh, accusations came out against him she was there saying I believe the women and now she's standing up there next to him like they're BFFs. Yeah. I don't get it. It is really weird. Um, so this is pure speculation. Pure nothing. But the the People's Cube, the world's most reliable news source. <laughs> or, never heard of it. So I guess it must be. Yeah, it's a, it's a website done by a previous um, Soviet propaganda artist. Um, <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's like the onion, but okay. Stalin. But they're okay. not actually for Stalin. They just make a lot of Stalin jokes. Um, they speculate that uh, Miss Harris had a facelift uh, around the time of uh, John Lewis's funeral because she okay. she did an appearance and she looks incredibly pained like her if you look at her expression like her it's like someone's if it's not a facelift someone slipped her a little bit of cyanide because her, her muscles are not very happy looking um which again speculation but i'm saying I'm kind of thinking that if she had a facelift, uh, let's see, the video was um, July 18th. Um, I'm speculating that she must have known she had the vice presidential nomination at that time, because otherwise, why make the effort? (laughs) Not to be petty, but... (laughs) Kamala Harris debuts bizarre plastic surgery. (laughs) So apparently, if you Google it, a lot of uh-huh. stuff comes up. Yeah. The which, bizarre facial expression. <laughs> right. Which, you know, her, she she looks nice now, not to totally knock her, but... Um, Everything's closed. I mean, we, not, non-essential surgeries aren't happening, are they? Yeah, that's Did essential you have to be enough. to be a, a vice presidential candidate to get a facelift? Pretty much. I mean... Yeah, so, I mean, we could talk about potential facelifts, or we could talk about how her campaign still owes a million dollars, and she got 386000 of it back by selling the names of her supporters. So, you know, we could go petty, or we could go not petty. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw something that was saying, you know, there's a lot that you could mock her for. Mm-hmm. But there's no reason to because there's so many things that she's actually done that you yeah. don't need to go petty on her. There's a lot of stuff that's super disturbing that you can just right. move on with. Like like that, yeah. yeah. Selling the name of your supporters. That seems totally legit and awesome. Yeah, that's that's not cool to do. But, you know, so which, whichever way you want to go. Go high, go low. <laughs> it's so... <laughs> Anyways, she's a piece of work. Not just surgery-wise. So, I I don't know if you caught on yet, but Anne and I don't necessarily think that she's a great candidate. And how about the fact that, you know, so, Jill Biden mm-hmm. is like, my husband is totally fabulous and there's nothing wrong with him and he is sharp as ever and writing his own speeches and, yeah, I totally think that if they win she'll be president by like the second month. Yeah, I don't. What do you think? And she's crazy scary, like way worse than even Sanders. Yeah, her, I don't know, she's been rated as one of the most far left candidates. And we've also seen as her role of district attorney that she, when she yields power over people, she is vicious with it. Yeah. So that's not... Uh, someone if you give them a little bit of power they go wild not someone you want no you want somebody who's uh well i think a lot of it goes back to the career politicians these people who make their living doing this they 
they want the power they want the the notoriety the whatever at all costs mm -hmm. they're not in this just to help people they're in it because it, it gives them something right i don't know which is one of the advantages of you know our guy trump seems like the democrats have just really gone into this like mode of like doom and gloom and how terrible Trump is and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the economy hasn't been great. Yeah, a bajillion people lost their jobs recently because of COVID. Yeah, businesses are closing. But things are turning around. And you can see that. And, you know, Trump is trying to highlight these businesses. He's trying to help people get back on their feet. He's trying to. And I just think that that's one of the biggest differences is that you can be part of this party that's like, oh, we hate everybody and, you know, you better pay reparations because you're white and you better, or you can be part of this party that is like, yes, we want to help you no matter what. We want to see you do well. We want to, I don't know. Right. I think that there's a huge difference just in that out in the outlook. Mike Pence had an appearance on uh, Rush Limbaugh's program the other day and he and it was very, you know, he, he went down, you know, like, yes, many people lost their jobs during the coronavirus, but we do have good numbers. And he went down the line of what's happening, what's going on, what, you know, what the coronavirus numbers are. And at the end of it, um, it really struck me. It, it, I mean, it kind of sounded like Rush was sucking up, but he was very earnest about it. It was very, very striking to me, very interesting. It is. And I think that like, I saw Kim Klasik's ad and I've been following her since I saw it like a few days ago. And I just, I think that that's part of what is appealing about her mm -hmm. is that, yeah, there are a lot of issues in Baltimore, but we can change them. We can make things better for everybody. And I think that that's not what we hear from the other side that often we hear a lot of like, Oh, things are so terrible. We have to blame this person or that person or, and, and it's not, that's not the message that I've been hearing lately. It's, it's more hopeful. It's more happy. And I think that that appeals to people a lot because you can only deal with so much doom and gloom before you're just over it. Right. And but. also the, the different solutions to problems that we have, one side who are saying that a lot of this is management issues of what what policies have we been enacting what can be done better and on the other side many people are saying this is intrinsic racism well how do you get rid of intrinsic racism if it's the fault of people for the color of their skin how there's no solution to that there's no Right. Like, oh, well, we have to do better. Well, we have to be more in lockstep than we currently are. And if you put a toe out of line, then you're, oops, sorry, then we're done. You can't, um, you know, it doesn't, that is not a solution. That's the. Yeah. And it's, um, it's the issues of, you know, when Obama was in, oh, manufacturing will never come back. Well, how mm -hmm. many manufacturing jobs has Trump brought back now? Like, they just exactly. make these statements that are so Right. Obama awful. said that you'd need a terrible. magic wand to bring it back. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what's really scaring um, people on the Democratic side. They said it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Trump says it's not, we'll get solutions and we will actually enact them. And again, Republican candidates have been elected for years on the same solutions that Trump is, is enacting. And yet they're the never Trumpers. They're, it's like they're jealous of his success. When did they, did they try? Did, I mean, not did they try, but they were not as effective and someone is effective now and they're not good sports about it. Yep. Nope. Um, in the first 30 months of, a, of Trump's presidency, manufacturing jobs were up almost 315,000. Wow. So, and, and that's, I mean, I know the numbers have changed because of COVID and the things that are going on now, but 
even so, that's pretty impressive. And it goes to show that if things were able to continue the way they are, I mean, we've had great numbers. It's almost like the left doesn't want us to have great numbers and to have people do well. And I just don't understand how that could be a winning strategy. Don't mm -hmm. people want, I mean, maybe they don't, maybe they don't want jobs and stuff, but it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, maybe they want it just as things have always been, but on the slow decline. Yeah. The that status change quo, is a scary thing. It is, but yeah. still it's, I don't know. I don't know the answer, Anne. No, I wish do I. I did. You have a knit along still on. Yeah, I still have the Warrior Knit Along going on. It's it's happening until the end of September. Um, there's a prize of a deplorable knitter bag for if you if you complete one of the projects. It doesn't have to be the cowl. It could be a hat, an ear warmer. There's um, everybody who finishes something with the pattern will be honored to win a deplorable knitter bag and also the pink skein of yarn handy just to remind you so that you can ooh and ah because I mean come on who does not want this I mean it is called totally tubular which is it pretty much yeah it's, it's 80s lovely. hot pink neon which is awesome <laughs> 80s would... 90s you know <laughs> See, I see little orange flecks in there. Is that orange and blue or orange and black or? Um, there's like some black and there's a couple spots that look almost red, that little orangish reddish color that you saw. Um, bluish purple, black, white. I mean, it's, it's a tonal. Can you see it? It's kind of a tonal pink with speckles and different. Oh, oh there you go. There we go. It's really pretty fabulous. It's lovely. So this is someone I have not gotten my hands on yet for my own personal self, but someday, someday <laughs> I will knit something up with this and show you. Not this one specifically, another of her colors. <laughs> I'm not stealing the, the prize, even though <laughs> I, I may have considered it for just, just a second, just a minute there. <laughs> You're like... To announce the winner of the deplorable knitter knit along. It's me. It's me. I no, entered. You know I won. You know why I can't? Why? It's fingering. Oh. <laughs> so I would have to order not that weight of yarn because we all know that it's spawned from Satan. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe I, not quite that much. As but. I did sit in a pile of fingering yarn. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, well, wait. <laughs> Is that what yarn you spun fingering weight? No, no. Okay. Um, it's, oh, just the rest of your stuff that you use. Yeah, I use a lot of fingering weight. Um, let's see, the stuff that I spun, eh, I'd say it's probably DK, DK to worsted. It's not super even. It is getting more even as I'm spinning it which is a problem because I want it to be all one project. <laughs> so, well, you'll just have to work with it. I'm sure you can, it, it'll be close enough. I'll figure it out. I mean, come on, it'll, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> Make sure you follow along with us, you know, like comment and subscribe, follow us on Instagram because Anne's not great about posting on Instagram, but I tend to post more projects <laughs> and things than she does. Um, well. And I'm also going to be on Fiberkind, so you can come find me there. Um, you can participate in the Knit Along over there, or you can participate on Facebook or on Instagram. So lots of options. Links are in the description, as always. What about you, love? I'm on Instagram. She's on Instagram. There. Her link is also always in the description. Oh, and on Etsy, of course. But yeah, yeah. And that's also there. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, I'll, I'll get up a list of what we were talking about today. So you don't just have to take our word for it, but we'll have some nice links below. Cool. So thanks for joining us. Like, comment and subscribe. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye, guys. All right, bye.